morning and welcome. Um, my name is Moni Singh, most of you know me. But <clears throat> some of you who've um, been coming to this for a while, and those of you who know me, are going to see something different now because <clears throat> things have changed. So let me reintroduce myself. My name is Moni Singh, and I am a Rune 153 financial advisor, committed to empower 153 Christians financially to avoid financial hardships, to attain financial freedom, and to build eternal treasures through a commitment to the GPS process, which is a unique, lifelong, biblically-based financial plan, which I'm going to explain, and also the genesis of Rune 153. But before I do that, let's open with a word of prayer. And I notice that everyone here is a believer, so we will play a bit differently. So let's open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together and to learn, Lord, how to be good stewards of the resources that you have entrusted us with. I particularly thank um, everyone who's involved to make this happen in the background. Um, bless them richly, Lord, for helping us. And I thank you, Lord, for each and everyone who's here. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint me, that I can convey my ideas as clearly and, and simply as possible. And I pray, Lord, that everyone who's here, that you would prepare their hearts and their minds, Lord, so that they can take this and become better financial stewards of the resources that you've given them. All of this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the genesis of Rune 153. Up to the end of uh, 2012, I positioned myself as a financial architect. And that also came about in 2007 when I attended a conference in um, Denver, Colorado. And I met this uh, heavy hitter financial advisor from, uh, uh, from London, England, who positioned himself as a financial advisor. And I thought, whoa, you know, he talked about rooms and, you know. So I took that idea when I came back and I thought, instead of just calling myself a financial advisor, I'm gonna call myself a financial architect. So I didn't follow exactly what he did, I adapted it to myself. And for the last five years, that's how I've positioned myself, okay? But um, there are three developments. If you've gone to the website, you would have read this because I put it up on the Rune 153 website that the, um, the financialarchitect.ca is all being phased out, okay? So starting in 2013, um, the positioning is gonna be as a Rune 153 financial advisor. So even the financialarchitect.ca, it's all being pointed to Rune 153. Okay, eventually it's just gonna be phased out. So let me explain how Rune 153 came about. In 1997, after one, being one year in Halifax from Montreal, um, I had moved here um, as part of a job transfer. And within a year, uh, the job didn't work out. And as soon as we came, we came to this church, Faith Tabernacle, and when the job didn't work out, I told Suzanne and the kids, let's pack up and go back. <laughs> There's nothing here. But they won't hear of it because uh, they had made friends and they had settled. And they told me to go find another job. <laughs> so um, I did what I knew, the only thing I knew of what to do. And HRM had a population of about 350,000 at that time. So I got myself re-licensed for life insurance, which is what I started doing when I got out of school. And part of my journey brought me here. And I sort of did some soul searching. You know, I was at the crossroads, what do I do now? And what I decided to do was, when I looked out at what was happening, I decided that I was going to continue to be an intermediary between the big financial institutions and my end clients. Okay? And with a population of 350,000 people, I figured you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. There's enough room there. And so I coined this term called rule of one because I wanted it to represent, reflect what it is I was doing, rule of one.
I'm a, a sole intermediary between the big financial institutions and the end clients. And I felt there was always going to be a need for that. Because the big financial institutions were moving from, be, uh, especially the institutions that I was dealing with, mainly life insurance companies. They were all becoming, going from being uh, mutual companies to stock companies. Okay? Mutual companies are companies that are owned by the policyholders. When you buy a policy, you are the owner of the company. And they were all moving into in the direction of becoming stock companies because as mutual companies, they couldn't raise money fast enough for growth okay, and for expansion. As stock companies, they will be able to sell their stock on, on the market. And as a result of that, the reporting started, you know, the, every 90 days they have to report to shareholders. So it became a different culture altogether and a very sales driven, bottom line driven. Okay? And I nonetheless felt that there's always going to be a need for the personal touch. So I came up with this saying that I'm going to be a, a, a rune advisor. Rune, runes, uh, rune stands for rule of one. This is how rune came about. So I coined that term rule of one to reflect what it is I was doing. An intermediary, one man, one problem, one client at a time to avoid clutter, just to give me some direction here. Okay? No employees working out of my home keep the overhead very low. Okay? And I, I thought this will fly, it will work, and it did. Okay? So <clears throat> this is where the first part of the genesis of Ru Rune 153 came from. Okay? So Rune, and since 1997, that's how I've been operating. Okay? Um, sometime in, two th I started as a, as a registered company, Rune, Rune Financial Group, and in 2002, I incorporated it into Rune Financial Group, Inc., right? And I've been operating uh, like that since then. The second part of, Gen of Rune 153, the 153, comes from John chapter 21, the first 11 verses. Just to refresh you on the story, the Lord had resurrected, and he was appearing to about 500 people over a period of 40 days, and this was one instance. On the Sea of Galilee, he appeared to the, you know, Peter and six other disciples had gone fishing all night. Okay? And they were about at dawn. They were about their boat was about 300 feet out from the from the beach of Galilee, and they saw a figure on the beach, and it was the Lord. And the Lord said to them, shouted to them, "Friends, did you catch any fish?" And they said, "No." He said, "Cast your net on the right hand side of the boat, and you will catch plenty of fish." And when Peter hauled in the net, there was 153 large fishes but the net didn't, didn't break. Now, the, the Word of God is living. You can read it as many times as you want, and if you open, if you pray for, ask the Lord to open your mind and to prepare your heart, you will receive it, you will receive new insight. So I was reading this for the umpteenth time, but this time, in my spirit, what I felt is that the Lord was telling me that I have been casting my net on the wrong side of the boat. Cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will catch plenty of fish. And I was quite happy with that for the clarity. <laughs> then again, it won't go away. Uh, you know, it said to me that you should be doing 153 transactions per year. One of the things that, you know, when we do planning as entrepreneurs, self-employed uh, people, you know, we, we plan productivity every year. So how many, where do we draw the line? Where, where do we stop? You know, where do we come to the balance? And the thought that came to me in my spirit was, each fiscal year, do 153 transactions. That was good. I love that. And now I got a bit more clarity. I've got a line in the sand. It, it didn't stop there. Okay? Um, so I was quite happy with that, 153 transactions. Then the thought came, I want you to go out there and empower 153 Christians over your lifetime. Okay? And the way you're going to empower them since, uh, and we're going to talk about the third part to this, since 1997, uh, since 2007, I've been asking the Lord to help me do my work better. And he gave me the GPS process, okay, which I'll talk about in the third, third part of this. And he, the, the, the second part is go and empower 153 Christians with the time that you have left, okay, with the GPS process, and by getting them to commit to the GPS process, which will make them laser-focused 
to become completely debt free and to build eternal treasures. Okay? And when that happens, if our people are doing that, it's going to be very powerful. You follow? If, if, if I've got 153 people, laser focused, you know, light, when it's diffused, this is what you get. Okay? But if you focus light, right, and take a magnifying glass, it can burn paper. If you f laser focus it, it'll cut through steel. Right? So that's the power of focus. So if I can get 153 Christians, individuals, couples, families, to become laser focused through the GPS process to only do two things, to become completely debt free and to build eternal treasures, we will further the kingdom. Right? So that was the second part, 150, and I was quite happy doing that. This is, you know, to me this is all very good and very clear. It gives me direction and I was very happy. It wouldn't go away. Then it came back and it said, go and empower 153 financial advisors to do what you are going to be doing. You're the prototype. Okay? So, like Jonah, when the, the Lord asks you to do something, and if it sounds like it's very big, you want to run away. So I sort of, you know. But in mid-November, um, the pieces started falling. Like I, I you know, okay, I, I understood this, and especially the, the part about the 153 financial advisors. I said, okay, you know, we'll deal with it when it comes. But sometime in mid-November, it became very clear that this is not far away. Okay, we need to do this very quickly. And the confirmations kept coming. In the last two months, I've had so many God moments that you know, if I were to sit down with you and to share them with you, it'll make your, it makes my, the, the back of my hair stand, head of my, you know, how you say it, back of your neck, the, the neck, how you say it? Hair on the back of my neck to stand. Uh, really, you know, it's, it's, it had to be God. It, it, there's no other explanation, okay? And, you know, because of where I am in my journey, I, I don't question it anymore. But there have been just one too many of those God moments uh, in the last uh, two months, all right? So, the 153 comes from there. So, this is where Rune 153 comes from, okay? Rune 153. And even the, um, the corporate structure has changed. So everything will be phased out from uh, Rune Financial Group to Rune 153 Financial Advisors. We're still working through it. And in the last two months, I've been talking to a lot of lawyers. And the, the model that we're going to use is a franchise model, right, for the 153 Financial Advisors. So that's the, the second part of the genesis of 15, uh, Rune 153 Financial Advisors. The third part. It's, it's the engine itself, which is the GPS process. Okay? Um, those of you who've been with me from the very beginning, um, in the fall of 2009 when we launched this, you will remember what kind of crazy names we have, 290, 30, and all of that. But this is all part of the process. Okay? And in 2012, um, it's settled. Okay? This is, uh, all the pieces are there. So the instrument, the vehicle is the GPS process, which is the third part of this. In <clears throat> Jeremiah 33, from the message, it says this, call on me and I will show you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. Okay? So I continuously go to the Lord and ask the Lord to help me, okay? help me in my walk, help me in my work. And when you ask, you get, right? And so this is where the, the GPS process came from, right? The Lord himself, when he was walking the earth, always used metaphors to relate to people you know, in a way that they could understand. And so the, the, the GPS process, which I'm going to explain uh, now, is, is one of those. Okay? So this is where the genesis of, um, this is the, the genesis of uh, Rune 153 Financial Advisors. So starting this year, uh, I'll be wearing two hats. I'll be, you know, this is my, my living. I have to continue to be the prototype, being a Rune 153 advisor, um, empowering 153 people myself. But simultaneously, I'll be beginning that process of uh, franchising 153 financial advisors across the country. It's going to be based on demographics, and in the Atlantic, we're going to have nine. 
okay? Because our market is very targeted, okay? He, he didn't tell me to go and, you know, be a financial advisor to everybody. Specific, very specific Christians, okay? Uh, marketing experts will tell you, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot when you do that because you've narrowed your market, you've limited yourself. But I'm not listening to marketing experts. I have a different drummer, listening to a different drummer here, okay? And because of that, um, you know, it's very, in, in the HRM, despite a population of 400,000 people, evangelical Christian population is only about one in 10, okay? And as a result of that, um, each of these advisors, we need enough of a market for them, and we'll only be able to put two in the HRM, one in, in the South Shore, one in the North Shore, and one in Cape Breton, right? Two in New Brunswick, uh, one in St. John Moncton, one in Charlottetown to cover the entire Atlantic, uh, uh, entire PI, because the, the focus is on the evangelical community, okay? Because this is biblically based, right? It'll resonate with them. So I want to go back to Rune 153. I want to tell you something about uh, Rune 153. You see the, uh, the colors, the corporate colors, when I had the uh, Rune, uh, the financial architect uh, was set up, and when Rune Financial Group was set up, um, the, the corporate colors were random. I just wanted something simple so that when I print business cards or letterheads, uh, you know, it wasn't gonna, not going to cost me much, so it was red and black, two colors, you know, keep it very simple. But this time, because I want to honor God, everything that we do, is to glorify God, okay? So we're going in a different direction. So when I was choosing my corporate colors, it came from Exodus 28.5. When Moses was uh, told to prepare garments for the high priest who would go in into the Holy of Holies once a year, okay? These were the colors God chose for the, 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 the garments. Purple, blue, gold, and scarlet. So when I sat down with the graphic artist, I said to her very specifically, these have to be the colors. And in the logo, all four colors are there. So that's just a bit of trivia.